Okay, in this video, I want to focus on how actually DOM and Druid design is mapped into code. What are the building blocks that we are used in the sample application? And all the bounded context lives in the ordering uh, namespace, in the ordering directory. It has its own data, uh, sorry, test directory and lib directory. And the ordering is uh, declaring the main namespace and require, requiring all the dependencies explicitly. And in the ordering directory, we have all the events, um, all the commands, an aggregate, and domain services. So let's, let's go one by one in alphabetical order. This is add item to basket as a command. <clears throat> you often want to use commands with some kind of uh, schema so that you know what are the types expected uh, and you can verify it at the most top level. The commands are initialized in the controller so if anything is wrong with this command in the controller you will get an exception. Then we have a fake number generator. I believe it's used only in tests it's a domain service and the actual um, number generator is somewhere here. So this is just something that we can use uh, in the real application while the previous one was, was only used probably in tests. So this is a domain service, it's usually just a small function that is not really related to the domain logic, it's just something to cal it calculate something usually. Uh, item added to basket is an event. Uh, here we could use the schema as well. We didn't go with this convention here. It's There are several ways of doing this stuff, so it's, it's up to you to decide. Uh, the events are uh, namespaced with the original bounded context. That's like, I think that's a good pattern overall. Uh, this is just another way of saying this inherits from event. And event is the event from race event store. Um, item removed from basket again an event number generated on domain service on item added to basket so this is a uh, on add item to basket so this is a command handler we are using the on prefixes here for the command handlers uh, you could also call it uh, add item to basket command handler for example uh, usually it's a very very small piece of code which is only responsible for loading an aggregate we have a helper for that it comes from command handler this is a very simple uh, thing as well. We just you know, have something to wrap with aggregate for us and stream name because that's very very uh, easy uh, and that's uh, very very often used. So at this level we are uh, just calling the aggregate one method on the aggregate. We unwrap the data from the command and we pass it to um, to the order. We could use a value in this application. We haven't done it yet, but we can do it and you show an example of how value object would be used. This could be the product could be used a value as a value object, and instead of product ID, we could just have a product uh, value object and product class. Uh, remove item from basket handler again. Just wrapper over aggregate and remove item. Uh, you can also imagine I have shown in the previous video how. Um, how Rails even store is in, initialized and configured and in here you see we are passing the command handler and we are having those command handlers as classes basically it can be just we could use the with aggregate stuff here directly without creating a new abstraction that's also possible Pro probably it's better to have a separate class for that but I just want to say that this is all very simple it's just that because many of the uh, many of the command handlers is basically find the aggregate call one method but some of them are more complicated you see again find aggregate call one method uh, find, aggre find aggregate generate a number and then submit uh, so call the aggregate method the command handlers for those of you who are um, who use the rail service objects a lot you see the the pattern it's very similar to service object and actually when in my recommended strategies of migrating from existing race applications to ddd the service object is a good step uh, to have it, but it's a temporary step. So you will have a service object, what would you will gradually uh, get smaller and smaller to the point where it will actually become a command handler and do just one thing or two things like using the number generator. Um, now is the nice part, the aggregate root. So order is the aggregate root. It has some uh, state, it has some instance variables. It has some other objects in the aggregate. That's, it's called root because it has children object, objects. 
The public methods, they are almost always the same pattern. So there's some kind of checking the logic. We are using exceptions for control flow. I know this is uh, controversial for, for some Ruby developers. You can imagine that this is returning false if you don't like uh, exceptions for that or something like that. We just go with exceptions. That's, uh, but this is like an implementation detail from the domain, per domain driven perspective. Uh, please note one pattern when we call a public method, then we also called apply because apply is used is like extracting setting the state to always to those um, those methods where you handle the event this is important because when the this is how event sourcing works here we will be uh, we'll talk about event sourcing later in details but we were basically building one by one so for now it's important to know that this, there's this pattern of the two parts of the method race and uh, and apply and there, there are those uh, event handlers. We'll, we'll come back to that in the, in the video where we'll talk about aggregates at the lowest level and the persistence level. Here we are mostly thinking about aggregates as this interface that there's a public method which can raise exceptions. Uh, and that's basically it. This part is about persistence. Uh, so as a result of calling an aggregate event, aggregate events are published. That's, that's the way it works. You can look at the implementation of aggregate root if you like. Um, overall, it's a very, very uh, small thing. It's not a big deal. We are just caring about having the collection of unpublished events so that we can access them. They are uh, made uh, access accessible from someone from the outside. We know how to load an aggregate. We know how to store an aggregate. And we know what it means to have apply. And that's basically it. So there is not much about it. There is like no magic. Don't be worried that this is something automagical and stuff like that. This is mostly uh, simple Ruby code. And again, order expired, just a simple event, order line, simple event, uh, order submitted, uh, simple event, uh, sorry, order line was an, oh, this is actually a value object, order line is a value object here. So we can compare value object, um, the product ID is, is the main thing to compare against. So that, that's a nice thing here. Uh, remove item from basket as a command, set order as expired as a command submit order as a command and that's basically it so that's the part about domain driven design events commands aggregates uh, domain services and uh, an example of a value object in the code base